What's up, my brother? How you doing? Lencho. Can you hear me good? Do I gotta scream and yell? We're gonna get started at 7.07. Give people a few minutes to jump on. I'm always good, bro, always good. Just getting ready to drop the word right now. 7.07, we'll get started, three minutes. Good to hear, bro. Good to hear. Did you get your car checked out? Let's go. Seven oh seven. We're gonna go ahead and get started. Come to San Jose, man. I got a mobile mechanic, bro. He's really inexpensive, man. He knows his stuff. He works on my cars right here at my house when I need it. You know, sometimes I don't want to do stuff, so I'll call him and have him do it. Fuel injectors aren't that bad, bro. We can buy it. You can buy the fuel injectors. I got a website where I buy them online. I replace all the fuel injectors in my car myself. So, um, I will speak the word right now, 707, but I'll talk to you afterwards, man, about your car. Yeah, it's not that hard, man. It's not that hard changing the fuel injectors. People get scared of them. Um, I've changed my own. But uh, let me know. Uh, I got a website where I buy them at. Everything's it's not that expensive from there. Anyway, another minute, 707, we're going to get started and get into God's word, amen? Hallelujah. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Jesus, the lover of our soul. Amen. It's a, it's a blessing. It's a blessing just to uh, to partake of the Word of God. But nevertheless, to, to serve the Lord. To be a vessel for God. Amen. It's just, um, we're going to bow. We're going to open up with the Word of Prayer. Father, we just come before you tonight as we thank you once again, Lord. For the opportunity, God, to, to be here right now, Lord, Father God, we we thank you for your wonderful mercy and grace and sovereignty that has been bestowed upon our lives, God. We ask you and pray, Lord, as we gather together, Father God, as a body, Lord, those that are here, those that are hearing the word tonight, or they may hear it at another night, Lord, we ask and pray that the heart and the mind be open to receive your word, Father God. Lord, that I would decrease and you would increase, as John 3.30 says, Father God. Set me aside, Lord, and just speak the way you want to speak, Lord. Let your words just flow, Father God. Let your anointing flow this evening. We thank you and love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. We are going to um, continue on what the Lord has given me in the book of Ephesians. We're going to, we're going to begin with uh, chapter 4 tonight. But really quick, I just want to recap, uh, recap on some of the stuff that uh, we started at the beginning because... The book of Ephesians, man, if you get into the book of Ephesians, and I share with a lot of people, I says, look, man, if, you, if you're going through some stuff, if you're having an issue on who your identity is, go to the book of Ephesians and read a chapter a day and meditate on it and study it and just and you read it. Read a chapter a day, and after you finish the six chapters, go back and read them again. Because if you get into the book of Ephesians, man, it's a powerful, powerful book. 
but it reassures us of who our identity is in Christ and what God has given us. Amen. So I'm going to go ahead and recap on what I've been starting with each message off. This is chapter four. If you haven't heard chapter one, two, or three, you can either go find it on my page or you can go to YouTube and just search my name, John R.C. Sr., and the messages are on there. But I encourage you, man, if you haven't, uh, if you haven't heard them, because as I've been speaking on this, man, I've been getting messages from people where the Holy Spirit is just moving and flowing and opening people's eyes and, and helping them to understand their true identity. And, and as we speak right now, we're going to have an understanding of what I'm talking about. Amen. But the purpose of, of, of reading and breaking down the book of Ephesians is to equip you as a child of God so that the saints of God can walk in their purpose and with all authority and power. Amen. We know, uh, we, we can all testify tonight that we know some people that are walking around as defeated Christians. They say they're Cristiano, amen, but, but they're walking around as defeated individuals, man. The circumstances overwhelm them, and, and they, they, um, they create um, their circumstances to be bigger than they are. But when you know who you are in God, you know who your identity is in God and the power and the authority that you possess, Man, there's nothing there that's going to stop you. There's nothing there that can overcome you and overwhelm you. Amen? So in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, it says that all Scripture is, is God-breathed and useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Amen? And, and that's what we're doing here tonight. That's what I'm doing with the book of Ephesians is, is to train you in righteousness to, so that you're equipped. Amen? So that you as a servant of God are equipped. For every good work, amen. How many know that God has a plan for our life, a purpose for our life, and that plan and that purpose is to fulfill what God has already predestined for you and I, amen. There's a plan. He Jeremiah 29, 11, he says that I know the plans that I have for you. So that plan, and as he says in the book of Psalms, that before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. I consecrated you. I set you apart. So that plan has been, prior to us even being born, that plan has been there, amen. And and what he's doing is he's preparing you and I for what's already been prepared for us and trying to bring us in alignment with that so that we can walk according to what the way God wants us to walk. Not according to the way that you and I want to walk, but the way that God has predestined for you and I to walk. Amen. So this word is to equip us all for all that God has for us. Amen. And, and right now what I want to talk about is the book of Ephesians. Is It was when Paul wrote this book. It was addressed to a group of believers who were rich beyond measure in Jesus Christ. Understand, they were rich beyond measure in Jesus Christ, yet they were living as beggars. Amen? They were living as beggars, and only because they are ignorant of their wealth. Amen? See, the, he, Paul was writing to these people to tell them that, you, you know what? You're blessed beyond measure. But they were ignorant because they didn't understand their true wealth in Christ. Amen? Since they haven't accepted their wealth, they relegate themselves to to live in ex as spiritual poor people. Amen? Because they didn't accept the wealth. Some of us have a problem of accepting God's love and all that God has given us. Amen? And because we don't accept it, we're walking around as spiritual poor people. Amen? But Paul begins describing in chapter 1 through 3 the contents of the Christian's heavenly bank account. And in our heavenly bank account, we have this. We have adoption. We have acceptance. We have redemption. We have forgiveness. We have wisdom, inheritance. We have the seal of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have life. We have grace. We have citizenship. In short, every spiritual blessing that we need, drawing upon that huge spiritual endowment that God gives us, the Christian has all the resources needed for living to praise be in the glory of God. Amen. We have everything that we need. So there's never a time that a Christian should be walking around defeated. Amen. There's never a time that we should be walking around as Christians defeated individuals. Because God has given you and I everything that we need. Amen. There's never a time that a Christian should be walking around saying, Man, you know, I feel depressed or for I feel worn down. Okay, it's okay to feel worn down. But you get back up and you keep moving, right? You don't allow circumstance to overwhelm you. But because we fail to accept the spiritual wealth that God gives us, we walk around as spiritual poor people. Amen. There are people that are walking around as spiritual beggars and spiritual poor people. And that's not who we are in Christ. And that's the reason of us coming to the book of Ephesians and breaking it down. We broke down chapters 1, 2, and 3. Amen. Like I said, if you haven't heard them, you can find them on my page or go to YouTube and search my name. Chapters 1, 2, and 3 are in there, man. And, and get in there and get caught up. Amen. And Paul, he wrote this epistle to the Christians to make more aware of their position in Christ. Amen. Paul wanted them to know their 
to be aware of their position in Christ. Just like God is using me to, to convey these messages unto you is because God wants you to be more aware of your position in Him. Amen. We have a position. Amen. Second Peter says that, that we are a chosen race, a royal priesthood. We're royalty. Amen. We're royalty. There's never anything that should overcome us. Amen. If anything, we are more than conquerors. We are overcomers. Amen. But people today, and you can see them. You can see them in the church. And it's just a matter of like, man, the minute that you do receive Christ, you receive this inheritance. You receive this spiritual bank account that God has given us. Amen. But people can't accept their wealth because they're so used to, to being beat up by the world. Or they can't forgive themselves for the things that they've done. So they walk around as these spiritual beggars, spiritual poor people. Amen. But man, understand something. You are a child of God. You are the apple of God's eye. Amen. You are more than a conqueror. You are an overcomer. Amen. We stand on holy ground. We stand on a solid foundation. Praise the Lord. Amen. In chapter 4 through 6, so we, we talked about chapters 1 through 3. Now we're going to talk about chapters 4. In, in chapter 4, and then we're going to move on to 6. Well, in chapter 4 through 6, it resembles an orthopedic clinic. Amen? These chapters resemble an orthopedic clinic where the Christian learns a spiritual walk rooted in his spiritual wealth. For we are his workmanship created in Christ for good works that we should walk in them. Amen? Praise the Lord. Amen? So that we have an understanding, the first half of Ephesians, the believers, this, the first half of the Ephesians, this is the believers' heavenly possessions, and we talked about what we have in our heavenly bank account, right? We talked about all that. So in chapters 1 through 3, focuses only on the divine gifts that we have been given. But chapters 4 through 6 include 35, listen, 35 directives. In the last half of Ephesians that speak of the believer's responsibility, mine and your responsibility, to conduct himself according to his individual calling. Amen? So Ephesians begins in the heavens, but it concludes in the home and in all other relationships of our daily life. The two divisions are, the, in chapters 1 through 3, the position of the Christian, chap, Christian and the practice of the Christians in chapters 4 through 6. Amen. So now we're going to get into our responsibilities as Christians. Amen. What it is required of you and I to walk in our responsibilities. Amen. So in Ephesians, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to read chapter 4. And then we're going to break it down. Amen. And I hope that we get through it. We get through it all tonight because um, there, was a lot of, there was a lot that God had given me. And a lot of scripture to back up the scriptures. Amen. So that you have a, a deeper understanding. That you don't, you're just not, we're not going to scratch the surface. We're going to dig deep into the word. So that you have an understanding of, of who you are. And what it is God is telling you to do. And how to conduct yourself. Amen. Because after all we're done here. With the book of Ephesians, man, there should be no reason why any of you are walking around as depressed individuals, as beat up individuals. Because if you are, then you need to go back and read Ephesians 1 through 6 all over again. And read it. And I tell people, read it and read it. You know, I share with, with guys in juvenile hall. I share with guys in the jails. I share with guys in prisons. I write guys and I tell them, man, read this, man. Read this. And then when you're done with it, read it again. And then when you're done with it, read it again. Because you have an understanding. You have a deeper understanding of who it is in God that you are. Amen? So we're going to read Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. It says, Therefore I, this is Paul, the prisoner of the Lord, urge you, urge you, he says, to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you have been called. With all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, be diligent to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Verse 4. Therefore, therefore is one body and one Spirit, just as you also were called in the hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and the Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. Verse 7 says this. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it says, when he ascended on high, he led captive the captives, amen, and he gave gifts to people. Verse 9 says, now the expression he ascended says this, when he ascended, it means that, except that he also, when he ascended, he also descended. How many know that when he descended, he went down to hell and took the gates, of, take, took the gates away from the enemy, amen, the keys, amen, and he led, um, and he also descended into the lower parts of the earth. Verse 10, He who descended is himself also who ascended far above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. 
And he gave some as apostles, some as prophets, some as evangelists, some as pastors, and some as teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ until we attain the full unity, attain to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a mature man, to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. Amen. As a result, we no longer be, be children tossed here and there by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of people, by the craftiness, craftiness and deceitful scheming. Verse 15, but speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in all aspects into him who is ahead, that is Christ. Amen. From whom the whole body being fitted and held together by what every joint supplies according to the proper working of each individual part causes the growth of the body for the building up of itself amen in love verse 17 so i say this and affirm the lord that you are no longer that you no longer walk just as the un, as the gentiles walk now listen to the word in all fut futility of their minds being darkened in their understanding excluded from the life of god because of the ignorance that is in them because of the hardness of their heart. And they having become callous have given themselves up to the indecent behavior for the practice of every kind of impurity and greediness. Amen. He says, but you, you did not learn Christ in this way. If indeed, if you have heard and have been taught in him, just as the truth is in Jesus, that in reference to your former way of life, you are to rid yourself of the old self. Amen. Which is being corrupted. Amen which is being corrupted in accordance with the lust of deceit, verse 23, and that you are to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on the new self, which is in the likeness, which is in the likeness of God, has been created in righteousness and holiness of the truth. Therefore, ridding yourself of falsehood, speak truth, each one of you, with his neighbor, because we are parts of one another. Be angry, and yet do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not give the devil an opportunity. The one who steals must steal no longer, but rather he must labor, producing with his own hands what is good, so that he will have something to share with the one who has need. Let, listen, verse 29, let no unwholesome word come out of your mouth, but if there is anything, any good word for edification according to the need of the moment, say that, so that it will give grace to those who hear. Verse 30, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. All bitterness, wrath, anger, and clamor, and slander must be removed from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ also has forgiven you. Amen? That's Ephesians chapter 4, 1 through 31. Amen? We are instructed. You and I are instructed. And, and you can't, you can't keep using the excuse that, God is still working on me. Yeah, that's true. But we can't use that as a reason to justify our actions. You can't. You've got to stop using that. That's a weak excuse. Amen? Because if you're not growing in Christ, it's because you're not reading His Word. Because you, if you're not growing, you can't help but grow when you read the Word of God. You can't help but grow when you get into prayer and you get into the presence of God. If you're not growing, if you're the same person that you were five years ago when you came to Christ, two years ago when you came to Christ, 15 years ago when you came to Christ, then it's not God. It's you. It's you. Amen? Can I get an amen? It's, it's, it's not. We can't blame God. We can't say that God is still working on me because there's got to be evidence of growth in your life. Amen? There's got to be evidence of growth in your life from the time that you came to God to, to today that there's got to be some evidence that you're growing in the things of God. We can't keep saying, I'm a Christian under construction. That's true. That's true. We are. We, we're under construction daily, but we can't use that to justify our actions because God's Word, God's Word, if you get into it daily, God's Word instructs you how to conduct yourself. So now we're going to break these down. We're going to break down chapter 4, verses 1, all the way to 31. We're going to break this down. Verse 1, he says, Therefore, are the prisoners of the Lord urge you, urge you, well, I should have given you the Greek definition of urge, but I didn't pull it up. Urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling 
with which you have been called. Amen? How have we been called? We've been called to holiness. We've been called to righteousness. Amen? We've been called to holiness and righteousness. Verse 2 says, With all humility and gentleness, with patience, Bearing with one another in love. Amen. Come on, somebody. Can I? How many times have you seen Christians on Facebook, man, bam, bam, bumping heads with one another over some political post, over some political event, or whatever it may be, maybe even the vaccine. You know, me, it's the individual's choice. You know, we, I mean, I'm solid on Christ, but if an individual wants to get it, who are you to knock them? Man, so be it. God, God gives us freedom of choice. Just like... He gives you the choice to serve Him or not serve Him. He gives you the choice to grow or not to grow. Come on, somebody. Can you understand what I'm telling you? That you see Christians bumping heads. We, we shouldn't be doing that. We should not. They should not be doing that. But He says right here, I urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling by which you have called with all humility and with gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, conducting yourself in love. Can I get an amen? Colossians 3.12 says this, so, as those who have been chosen of God, come on, as those who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, and humility. Amen? Put on a heart of compassion, kindness, and humility. Amen? Hallelujah. When you, when you put on, when you obtain the compassion of Christ. In the book of Matthew chapter 9, Jesus said, the word of God says that, that Jesus looked at the people with compassion. Amen? Like sheep, lost sheep without a shepherd. When you develop the compassion of Christ inside of you, it gives you the passion to keep pushing forward. It gives you the passion, amen, to drive forward. It gives you the passion to want to reach the lost. It gives you the passion to conduct yourself in love the way he's talking about, amen. And Ephesians chapter 1, 4 says this, Just as he chose us, come on, we've been chosen, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we would be holy and blameless before him in love, amen. He talks about it. In verse 2, he says, With all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing one another, bearing in, with one another in love, to conduct you. Man, stop walking around with, Hey, you're a Christian. You shouldn't have an ounce of hate inside of you. Amen? Maybe you can have a disagreement with somebody, but you shouldn't have an ounce of hate. Amen? You shouldn't have an ounce of hate and conducting yourself in hate towards anybody. Because I'll tell you right now, that's not God. Nowhere is God in the center of your life. If you're conducting yourself in that matter. And as we get through this book, you're going to see. Amen? You will see. You're going to see. You're going to see. Amen? Verse 3. Ephesians 4, 3. He says, Be diligent to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Amen? He says, Be diligent to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Now, now let me share something with you. Let me share a little bit about the Holy Spirit real quick before we move forward. The person of the Holy Spirit, one of the most serious errors in the minds of many people today, one of the, one of the most errors in the minds of many people today is that concerning the Holy Spirit is that He is simply a principle. He is simply a principle or an influence. The Holy Spirit isn't just a principle or an influence. And a lot of people get that wrong. Amen. On the contrary, the Holy Spirit is as much a person as the Father and the Son. Amen. The personality of the Holy Spirit in the Bible speaks of, of the mind. Amen. Romans 8.27 says this. 8.27 and, and uh, 1 Corinthians will talk of the Holy Spirit. He is often described as speaking directly to men in the book of Acts. He spoke to Paul. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit speaks to me. Amen. When I put a message together, it's from the Holy Spirit. It's from God. Amen. It's from God. I don't just wing a message together. I'm not that guy. I, I got to go before the Lord and I got to seek the Lord and I got to hear from the Lord before I put a message. So before I even came and started doing the study on the book of Ephesians, it was something that God put inside of me. And I prayed on it for a few weeks before I brought it. I remember those who remember that have been with us for a while and going through the study. You remember that you've been paying attention to the Bible since I had talked about it before I brought it out. 
because God had deposited in me. The Holy Spirit spoke to me. And then I said, okay, let me just pray on this and let me prepare for this. Amen. And that's what I did. So the Holy Spirit will speak to you. Amen. He spoke to Paul in the book of Acts on a second missionary journey that Paul, the Apostle Paul was forbidden by the Spirit to visit a certain mission field. The Holy Spirit told him no. And then in the book of Acts chapter 16 verses 6 and 7, he was instructed to proceed towards another field of service act. Amen. It was God's Spirit who spoke directly to Christian leaders in the Antioch church to commanding them to send Paul and Barnabas on the first missionary journey in the book of Acts chapter 16, 32. The Holy Spirit is just not an influence. The Holy Spirit is a person. So when he says, be diligent to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace in verse, four, verse 3 of Ephesians 4, then he's talking about a person, man. He's talking, when you grab hold of that the Holy Spirit is just not an influence in your life, but he's a person, amen? The deity of the Holy Spirit is not only a real person, but he is also God, amen? As is God the Father, he too is everywhere at once, Psalms 9, 139, 7. As the Son is the eternal, as the Holy Spirit also existed forever. Amen. The Holy Spirit is everywhere. Just as God can be anywhere. The Holy Spirit is everywhere. He is often, in Hebrews 9, 14, He is often referred to as God in the Bible in Acts 5, 30 and 4. Finally, the Holy Spirit is equal with the Father and the Son. This is seen during the baptism in the book of Matthew. When Jesus Himself tells the, uh, prior to his ascension from the Mount of Olives, he tells the people to go out. I want you to understand, to go out and baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. I want you to understand how important the Holy Spirit is in our lives. We need the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Word of God, Jesus says that I will send you a comforter. I will send you a counselor. I will give you a helper. And that's the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's the Holy Spirit that speaks to you when He tells you don't act like that. When you go ahead and type a, a post on Facebook and then you get like, oh man, I shouldn't put this. Amen. The Holy Spirit's telling you don't put that. That ever happened to anybody? Just me. Amen. Amen? When you go type something up and you're all done, you're going to hit post and then like, oh man, I shouldn't do that. i have done that just the other day. Went and deleted. I'm like, nah, I don't want to be one to stir something up. That's not who I am. Amen? But I want you to understand that the Holy Spirit needs to be a very part, vital part of our lives. Amen? Verse 4 of Ephesians 4, 4, he says, There is one body, one spirit, just as you also were called into one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God. And Father of all, who is over all, and through all, and in all. Amen? One God. One Spirit. Amen? Just as you were called. Romans 11.36 says this, For from Him, and through Him, For from Him, and through Him, And to Him are all things. To Him be the glory. Amen? From Him, through Him, And to Him are all things. Amen? If you're a Christian today, you, you can't be walking around without the Holy Spirit. Because if you're not walking around with the Holy Spirit, you're not going to bear the fruit of the Spirit. You're going to bear the fruit of the flesh. So when you get angry, you're going to lash out. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna snap. Amen? Because if you have the Holy Spirit in you, if He's dwelling in this temple, this is a temple. If He's dwelling in this temple, you will not act out like that. If you find yourself acting out like that, and you got to get down on your knees and come before the Lord. See, every morning, every morning when I get into prayer, my prayer is before I start, Lord, I get in, you know, begin to thank the Lord for the day. But I welcome. I welcome. The Word of God says that, that God will never leave us nor forsake us. Amen? He won't. But you got to welcome Him into your life every day. Every morning in my prayer, I said, Father God, you're welcome here today. Holy Spirit, you're welcome here today. Jesus, you're welcome here today. I need you through this day. I need you through my prayer time. And then I go forward with my prayers. But every morning, every morning, every morning, you know, God is my witness. I welcome Father God into, into right there where I'm at. I welcome Jesus and I welcome the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because we need the Holy Spirit. Amen. And as we get close and get into this message, you're going to understand. Amen. Verse 7, he says, Ephesians 4 verse 7 he says but to each one of us grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift therefore it says when he is ascended on high he led captive the captives and he gave gifts to people amen he who descended 
is himself also who ascended far above all the heavens so that he might fill all things verse 11 and he gave some as apostles some as prophets some as evangelists and some as pastors and some as teachers amen but i want you to understand these right here apostles prophets evangelists pastors and teachers these are people that he's called into the ministry amen that are into the ministry but you and i you and i if you don't hold a position of an apostle a prophet an evangelist a pastor or a teacher you're still a minister of god and it is still your obligation to minister the word of god amen because as we read uh last week where paul urged paul paul urged paul made sure that he he knew you that you knew that we knew that that we are ministers of god he didn't say we are pastors we are evangelists we are ministers we see paul paul didn't hold the title as a pastor amen he was he held the title of a minister that's what he considered himself a minister of god and you and i if we are christians today if you're a follower of christ sold out christian and i'm talking about a follower not not a a, a sideline individual that's sitting in the stands cheering the cheering the group on cheering the family of christ on the body of christ on no if you're a true follower of god not a fan of god's a follower of god then you are a minister you are a minister of the gospel amen a minister of a gospel and he says that verse 12 he says all of this is for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ. Amen. So you and I have a responsibility and an obligation to build the body of Christ. And that's what he's doing. Is he's equipping. Remember, in the book of Ephesians 1 through, 3, 1, 1 through 3, we talked about our heavenly bank account on the gifts that he has given us. Amen. But now he's given us directives on how we should conduct ourselves. Now that we've got these gifts, this is what you need to do as well. Amen. Well, this is what you should be doing. Amen building up the body of christ second corinthians 13 9 says this for we rejoice when we ourselves are weak but you are strong this we also pray for that you become mature that you become mature you should no longer amen how many have been serving god for more than a year that's infancy amen one through a year that's in, that's an infancy stage one year to, to four, you're in a toddler stage. Five years and up, man, you're growing. You're growing as a young individual now. You should not be walking as a baby in Christ anymore. Amen? You should not be walking as a baby in Christ. You should not still be a toddler five years down the road. You should not still be a toddler ten years down the road. Amen? You should not be who you were when you came to Christ a year ago. No, get, get that out of here. You shouldn't be like that. Amen? But he says in 2 Corinthians 13, 9, he says, For we rejoice when we ourselves are weak, but you are strong. And this is what we also pray, that you become mature. It's time for you to grow up. Amen? You shouldn't be walking around as a defeated Christian. Verse 13, Until we all attain to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to a mature man, a mature woman, to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. Amen? That belongs to you and I. John 1.16 says, For his fullness we have all received, and grace upon grace. For his fullness, he says in the book of John, we have all received it. He didn't hold back. The minute that you received Christ, man, bam, all this was given to you. All this was given to you. The inheritance, the word of God says in the book of Ephesians 1, that we receive an inheritance. An inheritance. When you're receiving an inheritance, you're not getting, just getting a dollar. You're getting it all. Amen? In John 1, 16, to back up verse 13, he says, For of his fullness we have all, we have all received, and grace upon grace, we have all received his fullness. Why then? Why then, brothers and sisters, are we walking around, or some of you walking around as a defeated individual? See, you have to stop and realize that your identity is in Christ. Your identity is in the Word. Your identity isn't in your circumstances. Your identity isn't in your pastors. But Pastor John, you don't know what I've gone through in the past. You don't know what I've gone through in the past. Amen? And you're right, I don't know. But what I do know is that we have the author and perfecter of our faith, 
which is Christ Jesus. We have the healer, which is Jesus. We have the Holy Spirit, which is a comforter, which is our counselor. We have the resources. We have obtained the whole fullness of God within us, grace upon grace. Amen? Can I get an amen? Hallelujah? Come on, John. Verse 14 says, As a result, ooh, come on, Jesus. As a result, we are no longer to be children. As a result, we are no longer to be children tossed, tossed here and there by waves and carried away about by every wind of doctrine. Come on. He says, we are no longer to be children tossed. Wherever the waves of life are throwing you, man, like I'm getting battered, I'm getting beat up. You know why you're getting battered and beat up? Because you're allowing yourself. You're not defending yourself. You're not putting your dukes up and say, come on, you want to throw some wantas? Let's throw some enemy. You know why you're feeling battered and thrown around and tossing to and fro? Because you're not defending yourself on your knees and with the Word of God. You're not defending yourself. Amen? When Jesus fasted for 40 days, and he came around from the mountain, and the enemy came to him and tempted him, how did he defeat him? With the word of God. How are you defeating the enemy when he comes? Are you using the word? Or are you having a little pity party? And feeling sorry for yourself? And then telling people pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me brother. But you're not praying for yourself. You're not getting on your knees and fighting. Why? You have the resources. You have the resources. Why aren't you? Why aren't you getting on your knees and getting down and fighting? Have you ever backed down from a fight in the world? Then why are you backing down from a fight now? Amen. When you have God on your side. He says, as a result, we no longer to be children tossed here and there by waves and carried away by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery. Come on now. <laughs> by the trickery of people. How many know? How many know? This is a free commercial right here. How many of you know that what's going on in this world is trickery? Amen. How many of you know? I was just sharing with somebody today at my office and we were talking about it. And he says, you know, John, we, we, uh, it started off with about the issue about John Gruden. But then we started talking about COVID. And I told him, I said, you know, uh, because I, I've lost friends. And um, we lost friends. We just lost, I don't know if you guys knew Rob from Inky's Tattoo. He just passed away. And um, that's how it started. He, he asked me, he goes, hey, did you hear about Rob? I said, from Inkies? I said, yeah, I did. And he says, what do you think? I said, you know, I'm not saying that COVID isn't real. I'm not saying that it's not real. But I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. Because my foundation is on Christ. And God has a number of days of our lives. The, the days of our lives number. And He knows, amen? But the, the Word of God says that He did not give us a spirit of fear. So, as he says here that we should not be children tossed here and there by ways and carried about by every do wind of doctrine, by the trickery of people, by craftiness and de deceitful scheming. Amen? But speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up. Here he goes again. He says, we are to grow up. We are to grow up in all aspects into him who is the head, that is Christ, from whom the whole body being fitted and held together by what every joint supplies according to the proper working of each individual part causes the growth of the body for the rebuild for the building up of itself in love amen we are to grow up he says we are to grow up in all aspects in verse 15 we are to grow up amen for the building up itself in love Verse 17 says, So I say this and affirm in the Lord that you are no longer, that you are no longer walk, just as the Gentiles also walk, in the futility of their mind. How many know where the devil's playground is? In your mind. In your mente. If he can get into your mind, this is his playground. If he can get into your mind, he's going to control every action, after that, he's going to control the body. He's going to control the temple because he's got into your mind. He's got you thinking about things that you shouldn't be thinking about. He got into the mind of Eve. He got into her mind. And then he got into the mind of Adam and the, the dummy like a dummy. He just stood there and he didn't say, wait a minute, 
God said no. He stood there and waited for her to bite the apple. He got into the mind. He hasn't changed. He knows if I can get into their mind, man, I can control their actions. Amen? And he says it, verse 17, So I say this and affirm in the Lord that you no longer walk, just as the Gentiles also walk in the futility of their minds. Amen? Ephesians 2, 2 says this, In which you previously walked, according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, or, or of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. He says, but you previously walked in that manner. You previously walked in accordance to the course of this world. One time we were so lost and bound that we were following the things of the world. Can I get an amen? We were following the drug dealer. We were following the alcohol, the liquor store. We were following the things of the world. According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience, he's still working today. For Romans 1.21 says, For even though they knew God, they did not honor Him as God or give thanks to God. But they became futile in their reasonings and their senseless hearts were darkened. See, we formerly walked in that manner, but we no longer walk in that manner. We no longer walk according to the things within our minds. Amen? We walk by the Spirit, amen. We are led by the Spirit, amen. You're not led by feelings. Well, brother, I'm felt, I'm felt, I'm felt. No, I'm not felt by nothing. I'm led by the Spirit, amen. When an individual comes up to me and says, Hey, Pastor, I feel like the Spirit is leading me. You know what? I'm not, no, no, no. You better be sure that the Spirit is leading you, not that you feel that the Spirit is leading you, amen. Because I'm not going to receive what you're getting from your feelings. I'm going to receive what thus said the Lord says. I'm going to receive what the Lord is telling you to tell me. Not what you're feeling like. Amen. We don't walk in our feelings. We don't walk in our emotions. We don't walk in the futility of our minds. We walk in the Spirit and we are led by the Spirit. Amen. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Verse 18. Being darkened in their understandings, excluded from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the hardness of their heart, they and they haven't become callous and have given themselves up to the indecent behavior for the practice of every kind of impurity with greediness. Amen? They've given themselves over. See, you don't want to be an individual that says that you're a Christian, but yet you're giving yourself over to things that are not of God. Can I get an Amen? You're giving yourself over to things that are not of God. Amen? Colossians 3, 5 says, Therefore, treat the parts of your earthly body as dead to sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which amounts to idolatry. Hmm. Can I get an amen? Treat the parts of your earthly body as dead to sexual immorality, impurity, passion, Evil desires and greed and greed, amen, which amounts to idolatry, forms of idolatry. But we don't walk like that. We don't walk like that. Not in, not here, amen. Maybe somewhere else, amen, but not here. Verse 20 says, but you did not learn Christ in this way. Amen. Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29, he says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Learn from Jesus. Learn from God. Learn from the Holy Spirit today. Don't just attend church and so that you can check in that I'm at church. So that people can see you're at church on Sunday and then you're living the way you want to live. Monday through Saturday. No, don't do that. Amen. There's many people. I could point them out, but I'm not going to do that. Amen. I can point them out. They check in that they're at church on Sunday. Praise the Lord. They put they post things and they're thank you Jesus and all of this. Praise the Lord. But they're living contrary to the way God tells them to live. Amen? They know who they are. Some of them may be listening right now. But some of them may not want to jump on because I speak the truth. I speak the truth. Praise the Lord. But he says, Take my yoke, Matthew eleven twenty nine. Take my yoke upon, upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. See, when you begin to learn from God, when you begin to press into God, when you begin to get into the Word of God, you have this peace, man. You have this peace that surpasses all understanding, behind, surpasses all comprehension. You have this peace that whatever's going on, 
Whatever's going on to the left or to the right, it's not going to affect you because you've got the peace of God. And when I say it's not going to affect you, I mean it's not going to pull you into it. It's not going to drag you into it. Amen. Because your eyes are on the author and perfecter of our faith. You're on solid ground. Amen. And you've got the peace of God. You've got the peace of God. I can tell. When some people ask for prayer, I know who's praying for their own prayer request. Amen. But they're believing in God. But it's okay to ask other people to pray with you, to come in agreement with you. Amen. But you got to first pray for yourself. you got to first pray for your circumstance as well. You can't reach out for other people to pray for you and you're not praying. You can't reach out and ask other people to pray for you when you're living a life that is contrary to God. And you want the blessings and the benefits of God, but you want to live the way that you want to live. Amen? You can't do that. You can't. You can't. Amen? And I'm sorry to be the one to bust your bubble, but you can't. Amen? Verse 21 says, If indeed you have heard him and have been taught in him, just as the truth is in Jesus, that in reference to your former way of life, you are to rid yourself of the old self, which is being corrupted in accordance with the lust of the sea. Amen? 2 Corinthians 11.3 says, but I am afraid that as a serpent deceived Eve, didn't we talk about that earlier? As a serpent deceived Eve by his trickery, your minds will be led astray from sincere and pure devotion to Christ. Come on. The mind. The mind. We're going to go back to the mind. He says, but I am afraid as a serpent deceived Eve by his trickery, your minds will be led astray from sincere and pure devotion to Christ. I want you to understand something. You are a powerful individual in God. Because you have all the resources of God. There's no reason why you can't lay hands on people and pray for them. There's no reason. You know why? Because it's not you. Because you, you might think within your mind that I can't do that, Pastor John. I, I don't believe that I can heal somebody. I can lay hands on people. Amen. Because first of all, now you've allowed the enemy into your mind. To play with your mind that you can't do it. Second, it's not you doing the healing. It's God. Amen. All you are is the vessel. I have the power and the authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions. To lay my hands on the sick. And if it is God's will through me, God will heal them. Amen. God will heal them. But what happens is that you get it set in your mind that I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't do that. Philippians 4.13, we all know that scripture, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Why can't you do it? Oh, wait a minute. I could do some things through Christ and strengthens me. Is that what it says? No. I can do all things. All things. But you allow the enemy into your mind, man. And he says that, I'm afraid that as a serpent deceived Eve by his trigger, your minds will be led astray from sincere and pure devotion to Christ. He even tells you that you don't got to pray. He even tells you that you don't got to read today. Amen? He tells you. Oh, that's all right. You do it tomorrow. Come on. You know, we have to understand, man, that what, what God is trying to convey right here is that there's too many, too many Christians that are walking around defeated. Too many Christians are waiting for the next person to step up when that next person is waiting for you to step up. When all you got to do is just step out in faith and man, I'm going God. I'm going God. I got saved in, in November 13, 1992. Six months after I was saved, and I'm not boasting with it myself. Six months after I was saved, I was taking a leadership class to run a Bible study. It was a two-month class. Eight months after I was saved, I started a Bible study at my house on the north side. Six months after the starting of that Bible study, it grew to 40 people. In six months. And all I did was, man, I, I understood. I had an encounter with God. And I understood who I was with God. I got into the Word. And I said, I'm stepping out, God. I'm going to step out, Lord. And, and if you're with me, let's go. If God's not, if it's not God's will, it's not going to happen. But if it's God's will and you're stepping out, it's going to flow. It's going to flow. Can I get an amen? It's going to flow. But you got to understand who you are in God. Amen. We have a heavenly bank account of everything that God has given us. And now He's given us directives on what you need to do now. Now that I've equipped you with all of this, this is what you got to do. Amen. Verse 23, He says, And that you are to be renewed in the spirit of your minds. 
Come on, we know the scripture. Romans 12, 2 says this, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. By the renewing of your minds daily. Every day, man. We got to fight every day by the renewing of our mind. Amen? We got to fight every day. You can't let the enemy rule your mind. You can't let the enemy, you know, um, I see people, they post it. They're in clubs. They're in bars. They're hanging out. And they're posting, thank you, Jesus. You think Jesus is in that bar or that club with you? That's the devil's playground, man. You think Jesus is in that bar or that club with you? Amen? And you're in that bar, you're in that club, and you're saying, thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. I mean, well, you're having a good time. You think God is with you in that bar or in that club? You think that? See how the enemy, see how the enemy plays within your mind? He says, do not be conformed to the things of this world, but transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. God does not have you in that bar. God does not have you in that nightclub. Unless you're in there preaching to somebody, unless you're in there trying to win souls, don't try to justify it with a thank you, Jesus, praise the Lord, because God doesn't want you in those places. That's being conformed to the things of this world. How are you going to grow? He says, be mature, grow up. It's time for you to grow up. Amen? <laughs> I didn't write this word. It's in the Bible if you want to get into it. Amen? I'll send you the scripture. Praise the Lord. Verse 24, and he goes on to say, and to put on the new self, which is the likeness of God, has been created in righteousness and holiness of the truth. Therefore, ridding yourselves of falsehood, speak truth to one another, each of you with his neighbor, because we are parts of one another. Put on the new self. Amen. My prayer, when I get in, man, I, I pray. And when I, when, I, when I get up and I pray, like I said, I invite the Holy Spirit, I invite God, I invite Jesus. I also ask God every morning to clothe me. In his garments of righteousness. Because the word of God says our garments of righteousness are as filthy rags. Our garments, our righteousness is as filthy rags. And I ask God every day, clothe me God. Clothe me in the garments of your righteousness man. And we have to be clothed in the garments, the garments of righteousness of God every day. Amen. Put on the new self. Amen. Put on the new self. Clothe yourself in the garments of, garments of God. Zechariah 8.16 says this, These are the things which you shall do. Speak the truth to one another. Judge with truth. And judgment for peace at your gates. Judge with truth and speak to one another. How many of you have heard people say, Only God can judge me. That's a lie from the pit of hell. John chapter, chapter 7 verse 24 says, Do not judge according to appearance. But judge with the righteous judgment. The word right, that's the words of Jesus. The word righteous means according to the word of God. Paul writes in uh, 1 Corinthians, I believe, 5.16. He writes in, um, it's, uh, it's not my job to, to judge those outside of the church. But it is definitely our job to judge those inside of the church. Amen? So he says right here, judge with truth and judgment for peace at your gates. Romans 12.5 says, so... We who are many are one body in Christ in individual parts of one another. We all play a role in the body of Christ. We all play a role. And I remember I said earlier that we are all ministers. Just because you don't hold a title doesn't mean that you're not a minister. You're a minister of the gospel, amen? And we all hold a part in this body. Romans, I mean, uh, verse 26, Ephesians 4, 26, he says, Be angry and yet do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. Amen? Be angry. Amen. It's okay. It's okay to get angry. It's okay to get upset. But he says, do not sin. Do not lash out. If you get angry with somebody on Facebook, do not lash out. Because that's sin. Amen. That's sin. Do not lash out. He says, hey, be angry. You got the green light. Be angry if you want to get angry. But he says, yeah, do not sin. Do not sin. And do not let the sun go down on your anger. Don't go to bed on with that way. Oh man, you're not going to sleep good, amen? Cleanse yourself. Cleanse yourself before you go to sleep. Pray. Ask for forgiveness of your sins, anything you said or done before God that was not of Him. Cleanse yourself before you go to sleep, and you'll sleep with the peace of God, amen? Verse uh, 
uh, Psalms 4, 4 says, Tremble and do not sin. Meditate in your heart upon your bed and be still. It's basically what I said right now. Amen? Get in the presence of God. It's okay to be angry, but just don't sin. Verse 27, And do not give the devil an opportunity. Hear that? Do not give the devil. Man, you, you, Jesus, Jesus came down from fasting for 40 days. Hungry. He was hungry. Man, I, I did a 21 day fast. Woo! I did a few times a 21 day fast. Woo! Woo! You know, all we're getting is, is liquids, fruits, and vegetables. Woo! You're finding anything out there. Is that a vegetable? Is that a vegetable? Can I eat that? Amen? Can I eat that? You're finding wings. But Jesus didn't give the enemy an opportunity when he came down from fasting for 40 days. Amen? He didn't. He came back with the Word of God. He came back with the Word of God. And that's what you need to do. You're equipped. By the time we're done with Ephesians, you're going to be so equipped, man. So equipped. And like I said, I'm getting messages from people that God is moving through them. Just from the th first three chapters, God is moving through them. God is opening eyes in their eyes. I mean, God is removing scales and God is showing them things differently. And they're operating differently. They're functioning differently. They're walking differently. Amen. And that's what this is about. Amen. Verse 27 says, Do not give the devil an opportunity. Romans 12, 19 says, Never take your own revenge, beloved, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Amen. Never go after them. And, and stop this karma stuff, you know. When I hear see Christians post, man, karma's gonna get you. You know what that means? That you're wishing bad upon somebody. You're, you you wanted something bad to happen to somebody. Man, you know what? Pray for them people. If they did something wrong to you, something to hurt you and offend you, pray for them. Pray for them. Don't say karma's gonna get you. Because that means that you want something bad to happen to these individuals. God will deal with it. You turn them over to God. Turn it over to God. Let God deal with it. Whatever He does, He does. But you know, man, don't you come out and say karma's gonna get you. Amen. No. Pray for them. Pray for them. Amen. Hallelujah. James 4, 7. Submit therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Amen. Resist. And he will flee. Verse 28. We're going to get ready to close. So for yeah, we've got a few more scriptures. And we're going to get ready to close. What time is it? 8 o'clock. We'll go be done another 5 minutes. Let's drop it. Amen. Praise the Lord. The one who steals must no longer steal, but rather he must labor, producing with his own hands what is good, so that he will have something to share with the one who is need, who has need. Let, 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 say it with me, let, 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 no unwholesome word come out of your mouth. But if there is any good word for edification according to the need of the moment, say that so that it will give grace to those who hear. Come on, somebody. But if there is any good word for edification according to the need of the moment, say that, so that it will be given grace to those here. Ecclesiastes 10.12 says, Words from the mouth of the wise person are gracious, while the lips of a fool consume him. Watch what comes out of your mouth. Watch what you type on Facebook. Watch what you post. Amen? Watch what you say. Watch what you say. Amen? Watch what words come out of your mouth. Amen? And I, and I can get into it. I just run off of that mass, passage of scriptures. I can run right into another Bible study, but I'm not. We're going to stay on course. Amen? Verse 30, he says, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Do we know what grieve means? Do we know what grieve means? Do not grieve. When something bad happens, you, love, you lose a loved one, you grieve. You grieve, amen? You're sad. He says, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. Do not grieve. Don't make the Holy Spirit sad by your actions or by your words. Do not grieve the Spirit. Do not grieve the Spirit. And there's so many ways. That's another Bible study. There's so many ways to grieve the Holy Spirit. But what he's talking about right here is your actions. He's talking about your words. Don't, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Don't sadden the Holy Spirit. Amen? Don't sadden Him. 
Because the Holy Spirit is here to help you, guide you, lead you, counsel you, comfort you. Amen? But when we do things and we say things and we're supposed to have the Holy Spirit, we grieve the Holy Spirit and we are instructed right here. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Isaiah 63.10 says, But they rebelled and grieved His Holy Spirit. Therefore He turned Himself to become their enemy. And he fought against them. Ooh, come on. Did you catch it? Did you catch it? In verse 30, he tells us not to grieve the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 4.30, he says, tells us not to grieve the Holy Spirit. In Isaiah 63.10, he says, But they rebelled. They rebelled and grieved his Holy Spirit. Therefore, he turned. He God, he, God turned himself to become their enemy. And he fought against them. See, when you're gonna when you grieve the Holy Spirit, man, there's so much that you gotta understand in the spiritual realm that what your actions, your actions are gonna produce fruit or they're not gonna produce fruit. Your actions are gonna produce blessings or they're not gonna produce blessings. They're gonna produce curses. Your actions, your words, we don't understand. He says, but they rebelled and they grieved his Holy Spirit. Therefore, he turned himself to become their enemy, and he fought against them. You understand when you grieve the Holy Spirit, you're running the risk of God turning away from you and becoming your enemy? Do you understand that? No more. No more. Verse 31 says, All bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and slander must be removed from you all along with all malice. Amen? All bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, Slander. Woo! <laughs> we don't slander people, do we? I don't see it on Facebook. I I'm sure we do. People do. I see it. Slander must be removed from you along with all malice. Colossians 3.8 says this, But now you also rid yourself of all them, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene, obscene, again, obscene, say it with me, obscene speech from your mouth. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Ephesians 1.3 tells us of everything that we have in our spiritual bank account. But now, Ephesians 4, 4 through 6 are the directives that we need to grow up and put what God has given up to us to practice. Amen. 1 Peter 2.1 says this, Therefore rid yourself of all malice and deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander. Read scriptures right there. Get rid of it. Amen. Get rid of it. Last verse. Be kind to one another. Verse 32. Be kind to one another. Compassionate. Forgiving each other. Just as God in Christ has also forgiven you. Amen. Don't hold nothing against nobody. I've been, I've been hurt before. I've been wrong before. I've been wrong by people that love me and that I love. But I never hold it against them, you know why? Because it's not them. If they were walking in the Spirit of God, they wouldn't have conducted themselves the way they did towards me. So I don't take it personal. I understand the spiritual realm. I understand. And as we get into the last chapter of Ephesians, I pray that you understand it as well. He says, be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ also has forgiven you. Forgive them. And I've also heard with Pastor John, you don't understand what they did to me. Forgive them. Because you know, and I know, that the Word of God says that if you have anything against your brother, go forgive them first in order for God to forgive you. In order for God to forgive you, you've got to forgive others first. Amen? Amen? You have to forgive others. You have to. Because if you want to be forgiven... You must forgive first. Last scripture. 1 Peter 3.8 says, To sum it up, all of you be harmonious, sympathetic, loving, compassionate, and humble. Amen? All of you be harmonious, sympathetic, loving, compassionate, and humble. Today, we have division in the body of Christ. Churches are against churches. That's out there. You know it is. 
this one church that uh, they try to all do the next church. I'm going to tell you right now, this is me. I will never, ever, ever lift up an entity. I will never, ever lift up a church name. I see people saying, I am this church. I am this church. The only thing that I will lift up is God, is the name of Jesus. I will never lift up an entity. Because to me, that brings division. That, that, that's you say my church is better than your church. I am. And you know what I'm talking about. Churches say I am. And then they say their church name. No. I'm a child of God. I'm not about division. I'm not. I'm not going to speak division and I'm not going to bring division. Your church is your church. That's the place which you fellowship. But we are the church. We are the body of Christ. So I, you'll never catch me lifting up an entity. I will lift up the name of Jesus. I will lift up the kingdom of God. I will lift up my Heavenly Father. I will lift up the Holy Spirit. But I will never lift up the name, uh, uh, an entity name. Amen? I will never. Because that brings division. That's like you're saying, I'm better than you. And that's how division comes. But, 1 Peter 3, 9 says, Sum it up. I'll be harmonious, sympathetic, loving, compassionate, and humble. And humble. Amen? It's not a church name. It's the name of Jesus. The name above all names. It's the kingdom of God. Amen? So, we've been given instructions tonight. And these are instructions that we have to apply to our lives. And I pray that, man, you grab it. And if you don't grab it, listen to this message again. If you got to listen to a message again, live it again. Listen to it again. I remember many, many years ago, many, many years ago, when I had my Bible study back in, uh, in the 90s, um, I preached the message, and people didn't grab it. So I preached it again, and they, you know, they, they kind of grabbed it. And um, I went to my leader, and I was telling him about it. And he says, John, you keep sharing that message, man, until they grab it. So I went back the next week and I shared it again. I went back, I left like five, six weeks. Until they finally asked, I'm like, hey, yo, how come you're teaching about the same thing every week? And I said, I'm going to teach it until you grab it. So I pray that you grab something here tonight. And if you didn't, go back and hear it again until you grab it. Or pick up your Bible and read Ephesians chapter 4 again until you grab it. And then read it again until you grab it. Because I'm going to tell you, each day it's going to speak to you differently. It's going to minister to you differently. And there's a nugget after nugget after nugget in there for you. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. We thank you guys for joining us tonight. We're going to bow our heads and we're going to pray tonight. Amen? We're just going to go before the throne of God. Father, we just come before you tonight as we thank you, Lord, for this time, the word, Father God. Lord, I pray that if there's anybody out there today, Lord, that is just man, that is just walking contrary to your word, God, that is walking around as a defeated individual, Lord, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that they grab a hold of this word, Father God, by the reins, Father God, and, and hold on to it, Father God. It's manna for their soul, God. And that they begin to grow up, God. They begin to build on the things of God and the things of you, God, on the word of God, O oh Lord. I pray, Father God, that you would saturate them, Lord, tonight, Father God. And if they're going through whatever they're going through, God, anything they're going through, Lord, I pray that they would put their eyes on you and not their circumstances, Father God. If there's a family member that is sick, Lord, I pray that they would put their eyes on you as a healer and not the individual that is sick, Father God. Because, Lord, your word says in the book of Hebrews, God, that we fix our eyes on the author and perfecter of our faith, who is Christ Jesus, God. Not on circumstances, God. Not on sicknesses, God, but on you, Father God. So we pray that this evening, God. And I pray that you bring peace and comfort to those that are going through what they're going through with family members, Lord. Maybe they've lost their love on God and one is sick, God. But, Lord, that they would, you would bring comfort to them, God. And peace that surpasses all understanding, Lord. But they would fix their eyes on you. And not on those that are sick tonight, Father God. Because we know, Father God, faith, faith is a mustard seed, Father God. If we say unto that mountain, be thou removed, it shall be removed, God. And we claim the healing in the name of Jesus, God. And we claim restoration to my brothers and sisters that are listening tonight, God. We claim growth right now, Father God. We thank you and love you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you guys. We'll see you next week. Share the message. Share the message. Amen. God bless you.